Welcome to worship, uh, friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, on this recorded Sunday service. Uh, I hope this uh, video finds you well, um, and just praying that you are able to connect uh, with each other through the Holy Spirit and connect with God through this worship service, as we've been continuing to do this for quite a few months now. Uh, do want to remind folks that we are uh, having in-person worship uh, outside in our patio area, and that's being reevaluated week to week based on uh, what's happening in our county and in our city with regard to surges and spikes of COVID. So there could be a time where we cease doing the outdoor worship, but we will continue with our uh, worship, recorded worships on Sundays, and continue to make those available to you. I do want to thank everyone who's been a part of this uh, for all of the hard work they're doing, and, and we've received quite a few kudos uh, for the work that we're doing in this, and that people are be able to connect through these worship services, which can only be attributed to the power of uh, our Lord. Uh, it is a communion service today, and so you are uh, welcome to pause the recording and prepare elements of bread and grape juice or crackers and wine, whatever it is that you might use if you uh, decide you'd like to participate uh, in this service and have those ready for our time of communion. As I mentioned, I think in the previous week's recording that we, are, uh, we have ordered self-contained communion kits that have juice and a cracker in them. Um, and my plan is to, when we receive those from the company that we've ordered them from, uh, to have a drive-in theater type communion service uh, for folks who aren't attending worship uh, in person, where we will also be offering that communion. It will only be for the sake of coming and receiving communion. So we'll have more details about that once we receive those elements. Uh, but until then, um, this is what we're offering in terms of our recorded services uh, and for communion. Thank you again for those of you faithful enough uh, to continue to make your offerings to our congregation in support of the ministries that are taking place uh, here at Grace. Uh, and though we, we, because we haven't been gathering, uh, we haven't had that first Sunday of the month uh, offering for the food pantry. So uh, in addition to your regular offering, if you haven't been um, making an offering or contribution, as you were accustomed to doing when we were in person, I would invite you to also make an offering for the food pantry in support of the work that they continue to do. So vital to our community, helping those people in need. Well, that's pretty much all we have uh, for announcements uh, for now. Uh, next up, we have the Kyrie and the Canticle of Praise. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy to see. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and Gracious Lord.
invite you now to join me in the prayer of the day. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading today comes to us from the Old Testament prophet Isaiah, in the 55th chapter, beginning with the 10th verse. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish what I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Amen. Our gospel uh, lesson comes to us today from Matthew's Gospel, 13th chapter, beginning with the first verse. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he said to them many things in parables, saying, listen, the sower went out to sow, and he sowed. Some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. And hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. That is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. Amen. Well, we have before us today in our gospel lesson certainly one of the more well-known parables, parable of the sower. Um, it's something that you have read or heard a number of times, I'm sure, over the course of time. And Jesus here teaching again in parables, as he did so often as a way of testing the hearts and testing the minds of his audience, the people that were following him as he was proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, as he was bringing to them something absolutely completely different than what anybody had expected from a Messiah, from one who was the Messiah, um, to test to see if they were open to receive a new kind of teaching. And he often used very familiar metaphors or stories for people in the first century to help them to relate with what he was saying. And that's certainly the case with this one. An agrarian society, people of Palestine in that area uh, would have been very familiar with agriculture and the sowing of seeds uh, and how plants grew and all kinds of different things. Uh, what some of them would have heard immediately was that Jesus was a terrible sower of seeds or knew nothing about seed sowing because nobody in their right mind would ever go to plant a crop of seeds and just scatter seeds all over the place without some kind of a plan as Jesus is describing uh, in this passage, in this parable about the sower. But we can also, uh, parables also uh, can sometimes 
it can be very easy for us to identify who the people are that we relate to in those parables. And in this case, Jesus describing himself as the sower. Uh, the seed, of course, he said is the word of God. And then the different kinds of soil that he mentions uh, are the people, people that will hear the word of God about the kingdom of heaven and how it's received and what it produces in each of them. And he gives an example of various different kinds of soil. Um, and that I think is related to this idea of how Jesus is just willy-nilly scattering these seeds all over the place. He is not planting them like a normal uh, uh, farmer would plant a seed, but he is scattering them in, a, in the widest and broadest possible area because access to the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ is for everybody. It's not just for the people who might receive that, the Israelites, if you will, at this point, it is for everybody. Uh, but the descriptions of the soil do reveal to us something true that, that was true then and true now is not everyone's going to receive it the same way. Some will immediately dismiss it because their hearts are hardened. Others will receive it with joy uh, and, and things will happen in their life and, and they'll fall away very quickly. But then there are those like us, like us believers, Christians, if you will, that receive that word and it is implanted in our heart. And it's, uh, it's probably quite understandable to take this idea of the word as literally the written scriptures that we have available to us now. But, uh, uh, and that certainly is a part of, I think, what God is, uh, what Jesus is saying, that it is the written word that is something that uh, is communicating. And that's what I think Jesus means by word, not just written word, but the way that the kingdom of heaven is being communicated to people. Uh, the, the access it's giving, being given to people. It is, yes, the written word. And keep in mind, uh, in Jesus' day, there was no New Testament. It would be decades before there would be anything like a gospel or a letter from Paul to, uh, to recount or explain uh, in detail Jesus, his life, and the things that he taught. Uh, the Old Testament has that in it as well. Uh, but obviously not as explicit as the New Testament we have today. So I think there's also a part of that is action as well. Uh, it's word, it's the spoken word, the written word, and it's the actions that uh, accompany those things that give the fullness of the idea, for me at least, of what the word is. Jesus didn't come just to teach. He certainly didn't write things down. Uh, he, the actions that are described in the New Testament about what Jesus did give validity and give power to the things that he said, proving that he was both God and man. He was Messiah. Those two things have to go together uh, because if it was just somebody saying they were the Messiah uh, or someone was just doing things without that word to explain it, it's, those are empty words and empty actions. Plenty of people prior to Jesus and since then have claimed to be Jesus or the Messiah, or Jesus returning for his second coming. But without the actions behind it, what's the proof? There is none. And explicit in this passage and also in the Isaiah passage is the idea that there is going to be some kind of action uh, produced in the people that receive the knowledge, the word of God, if you will, about the kingdom of heaven. In the Isaiah passage, the prophet said, speaking on behalf of God, that his word does not return void. It serves the purpose that he has for it. There is purpose in it. It's not just information being passed. There is purpose and intent that it will accomplish something. And God promises that it will accomplish something. And even in this parable, Jesus says, when you scatter seeds, they produce fruit. They produce something. They produce the potential for even more growth than what came from the original plant. There are no plants on earth, no trees, no shrubs or anything else that don't have a way of reproducing themselves, whether by seed or pollen or something else. It's going to produce something. 
And then for those of us who have received the word, the written word, the proclaimed word of the gospel, the proof of who Jesus is, there is fruit being produced in us. It is natural, just like it is for an apple tree to produce apples, a cherry tree to produce cherries, and a mustard plant to produce mustard. It's, it is just natural. The word has been implanted in your heart. You are a fruit producer. So we are, yes, the soil being described in this parable, but because also our connection with Christ through the Holy Spirit, through our baptism, we are producing fruit, seeds, if you will, that we also scatter throughout the world, wherever we live. Sometimes it's intentional. Sometimes it's just the scattering of the seeds around us wherever we are, sort of a Johnny Appleseed kind of mentality. Whether you embrace that or not, you are someone who produces fruit and thus also become a sower of seeds of your own. We can test the quality of our fruit, the quality of our soil, rather, our hearts and how we've embraced this by the kind of fruit that is being produced in us. And every action and every word, as I've said over and over again, every thought is fruit that's being produced from the seeds that have been planted in our hearts. Some fruit we produce is very, very good. Some fruit we produce is not so great. We're all actually, I think, going to be, in some ways, a little bit of every kind of soil that Jesus describes. The fruit that we produce isn't always going to be great, so how can we become better fruit producers? Well, it's by tilling the soil. It is by tending to the soil, just like you would if you were planting a garden. You may have dirt, but if there's no nutrients, if the pH isn't right, if it's infested with weeds, that soil will not produce a crop that you are looking for. And so we add things to it, we adjust it, we tweak it a bit uh, uh, to produce or to create good soil that produces a good and healthy crop. And certainly studying God's word is one way to increase the quality of our soil, something that many Christians uh, sadly do not really embrace. I was one of those for many, many years being a faithful churchgoer and a professed Christian. I remember having a conversation with a coworker one day and we got on the topic of the Bible and scripture um, and he, I don't know if asked me a question about reading or if I studied and I said, I don't need to read the Bible. I get to hear it every Sunday. Why would I need to hear the Bible? Well, only hearing it on Sundays or occasionally cracking open a, a Bible to read scripture is putting a very minimal amount of nutrients into the soil of your heart. And the fruit that you produce is not going to be the 30 or 60 or even 100 fold. In order to fully understand the word, the truth of the gospel, this is perhaps the most important resource that we have as Christians, and yet it is often ignored or it is left unattended or minimally taken advantage of by so many of us. It's no wonder that the fruit that's being produced in Christendom is sometimes not that abundant, 30, 60, or 100 fold. But why do it? I mean, I understand because I was one of those people. It's like, it doesn't make a difference. God's not gonna love me more or less, whether I'm reading the word or doing any other things that are going to help to till the soil in my heart to produce better fruit. Why bother? Because I have grace. Well, the most obvious answer to that is grace and the response that we have to wanting to serve and glorify God out of gratefulness and thankfulness for what we re we've received. That's the most obvious reason. We ought to be people producing good fruit for the blessings that we have received. But if that's not enough for us, or that's not something that we can embrace, then just for the sake of a better world, to live in a place that is nicer, that is kinder, that has grace as a more, more profound uh, uh, function and characteristic of the world that we live in. 
our own individual lives and families, our neighborhoods, workplaces, our cities, our counties, our state, our country, our world, and expanding it out. I mean, if people, we were better to each other, wouldn't this be a better place for all of us to live? And this is the purpose of the fruit that God wants produced from us. There is purpose to it. It is, yes, so people can also receive the word themselves because those seeds have been scattered for thousands of years by people like you and me. But also, just from a selfish perspective, to live in a better world, to treat people better, to strive for justice for all people, to have compassion and empathy for all humankind because all of us are created in the image of God. And we live in a world that I'm sure you would agree isn't always butterflies and rainbows. And that's because we don't always treat each other very, very well. But if you don't have the kind of soil in your heart to produce that kind of fruit, well, we're just going to continue to perpetuate the things as they are and have been. This to me is a word of encouragement for all of us. It is not a command or an obligation. I see it as an opportunity and a privilege for us to give us a way to till the soil, to create more fertile and better soil, to produce the kind of fruit in us that produces seeds that can be scattered around all over wherever we are to help plant those seeds in other people's hearts and just to make this a better world for God's sake for his glory absolutely but for our sake as well amen friends I invite you now to join me in a word of intercessory prayer as we open our hearts Get to that place where we can give thanks and praise to God and also lift up prayers of intercession. Gracious and glorious God, we give you praise just for who you are, our Lord. God, you are creator God. You are all ever-present God, all-knowing God, all-powerful God, unchanged, unmoved, eternal God, you are, your thoughts are far above ours. Your ways are far beyond our ways. You are aware of everything, every moment of every time and space, of everything that's going on in all of creation. Your goodness and your grace pour out of you into our world and our hearts. And we give you praise and thanks for those blessings and for all that we have in you all the good things that we enjoy in this life and for the privilege of being called your children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God, because of your care and kindness for creation, we lift up prayers of intercession for a world that is experiencing a global trial, for a country that is experiencing the trial of injustice, and for individuals that are dealing with their own issues of health, grief, loneliness, isolation, mental illness, addiction, fear, anxiety, and all of the things that are a part of the world we live in, God. I pray that you would provide for all as we have need. Healing from this pandemic, justice for all people, God. Peace and hope for all of us that deal with the trials of life. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, I do thank you that we are the seed casters in this world that you have called your church to bear fruit and to bear much fruit in your name. You give us all that we need to till the soil of our hearts, to make it more fertile, to help it to produce more and more fruit. God, help to continue to inspire us to be good so seed sowers in this world that you be glorified, that others come to know you, and this world would be a better place for us all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God, for those unspoken prayers that we all keep in our hearts, 
we lift them up to you, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Welcome, friends, to the Lord's Table. Uh, if you haven't already done so and you'd like to participate in communion at home uh, and you haven't prepared the elements, you're free to pause uh, the recording now and gather up uh, whatever it is that you'd use for communion for yourself. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord gathered with his disciples. He took a loaf of bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it, and he gave it to them to eat. And he said, take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the meal had ended, Jesus took a cup of wine, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this also in remembrance of me. Gathered, in, gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. That's of the body of Christ given for you. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you forever in his grace. Amen.
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and in all things fill you with his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord, bearing fruit in his name. Thanks be to God. Thank you.